Hi, I'm Larry Richman. For the next few moments, we're going to be talking about drive pointers. Drive pointers are nothing more than letters assigned to reference different directories or subdirectories where files can be stored. Both DOS and NetWare use drive pointers to move quickly to these areas. But drive pointers are used a little differently in DOS than in NetWare. DOS drive pointers refer to local devices on a workstation by assigning them letters of the alphabet. A colon typically points to the first floppy drive, B colon to the second floppy. C, D, and E may refer to various hard disks or to parts or partitions on a single hard disk. A partition is a physical portion of one hard disk. It could be compared to NetWare's volume. You can use the CD command to change from one directory to another on any disk like this. But you can't use CD to move from one drive to another, or from drive pointer to drive pointer. To change to a floppy drive from the hard disk, or to change from one drive pointer to another on the same drive, you must type the drive letter and a colon at the prompt. In this case, C colon. Like DOS, NetWare uses letters as drive pointers. But NetWare doesn't limit drive pointers to physical drives. It actually uses them to identify locations in the network directory structure. Let me show you how. This basic drive structure should be familiar to you. Normally, if you wanted to access the customer subdirectory, you would type cd backslash sales backslash debi backslash customer, then return. That's 22 keystrokes just to reach the directory you're after. But by assigning this path a network pointer, we'll say q colon, you can accomplish the same thing with just three keystrokes. This saves a lot of time and makes the network far easier to use. In a moment, we'll show you how to set up drive mappings. Directories which store data files and directories which contain executable files, like applications, are usually kept separate on the NetWare directory structure. The two types of directories are also referenced by different kinds of NetWare drive pointers. That way, you have simultaneous access to files in both directories. The two kinds of drive pointers are network drive pointers and search drive pointers. A network drive pointer, sometimes called a regular pointer, is used to access user-created data files. To use it, you must be in the directory it references. You move to the directory by simply typing the pointer at the prompt. Search pointers allow a user located in a data directory to access executable files located in another directory. Search pointers shouldn't be used for data-only files, but for executable files. That is, files which determine the operation of an application or command. You'll always find a .exe, .com, or .bat extension on an executable file. For example, executable files are found in application directories and network directories like public which contains command line utilities. Note that search drives are like the DOS path command. Let me show you how a search drive works. If the user is currently mapped to the home directory and types the command to access a database application, NetWare first searches the user's current directory for the files needed to run the application. Since the user's home directory only contains data files, the executable application files will not be found. So NetWare then searches the location designation in the first search drive. If the files are not found there, NetWare sequentially searches through the other search drive designations until the files for the application are located. Then NetWare retrieves the application. Remember that since the user is still located in the home directory, any data files required by the application will be found. As you can see, a user can work most efficiently when the most frequently used applications are assigned the lowest possible search drive numbers. Search drives are numbered 1 through 16. The user selects the number, but the system automatically assigns a corresponding network drive letter in reverse order, starting with Z. In this way, the user can use a search drive as a regular drive too, by using its letter equivalent. There are 26 letters available to each workstation to assign as DOS, network, and search drive pointers. For instance, DOS 3.3 uses drives A through E by default, but the remaining letters may be assigned as network or search drives to point to various locations within the directory structure. 
The number of search drives may increase or decrease depending on the number of network drives you define. The map utility is really quite easy to use. It assigns search and network drive pointers to directories. When a user types map without any additional parameters, a display of current drive mappings for the workstation appear. The first five pointers are mapped to local drives. Those are the DOS dedicated pointers we discussed earlier. So the first available network drive pointer is F. However, the user can assign any network drive pointer he or she wants. The map command has several options that you'll find useful. To map a regular network drive, type map, a drive letter of your choice, colon, the equal sign, and a path. To map G drive to Mary's home directory, I type map G colon equals sys colon users backslash Mary. But what if I want to create a search drive which can look for the word processing applications no matter where Mary is located? I simply type map s3 colon equals sys colon apps backslash wp. I've just mapped a search drive. It may be helpful to understand that mapping search drives is similar to the DOS path command. In fact, the map command sets up network search drive in the path environment because DOS expects to find them there. To insert a new search drive in the ordered sequence of search drives, I type map ins s3 colon equals sys colon apps backslash db. This is now the new S3. The previous S3 is now S4, and all other search drives are shifted down in their proper order. Two important things to remember about map insert. First, the users must use the command to retain their local DOS path upon logout and while they're working in the NetWare environment. If they don't, their local DOS path statements can be overwritten. Second, remember that this command inserts the drive letter in the location you specify, but maintains all other drive letters. By contrast, if I were simply to type map s3 colon equals sys colon apps backslash ss, the existing s3 search drive would be converted to a regular network drive, and NetWare would reassign the old search drive 3 to the next available drive letter. Another command you'll want to know is map delete. As you might guess, this command deletes a map definition. The user simply types map del and the drive letter or search drive number, and it will be deleted. As a general rule, you don't want users working at the root level, but the fact is that some applications must use the root level. The map root command allows you to keep users out of the root level by fooling applications into thinking they're looking at the root directory. You just type map root, a drive letter, colon, and name the directory path and a pseudo root is created at the specified path. Pretty tricky. Now let's talk about map next. Map next tells NetWare to assign the path you specify to the next available drive, whatever it is. This way you don't have to remember or look up the drives you've already assigned. Here's how it works. First you type map next sys colon public backslash dos. That's all there is to it. The system automatically assigns sys public dos to the next available drive pointer. Mappings made from the command line are temporary. Later in the course, you'll learn how to put them in login scripts, so they remain active, like the mappings you see when you log in. <laughs>